بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام الساعة أما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is one and has no partner And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger After whom there is no more messenger to come His family, his companions And all those who follow them in righteousness until the hour is established My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I am sure we've all heard that the deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the most is the one that is done regularly or constantly. And this is a hadith actually that the Imam al-Bukhari relates in his Sahih. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam first of all advised us to do the things we have the ability and the capacity to do. That is we should not overburden ourselves. Because he tells us in the hadith that if someone tries to do too much, eventually it will overcome him or her. We will suffer from what we call burnout. And Ibn Hajar, uh, rahimahullah, in discussing these hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said the problem with overburdening oneself is that when the person burns out, they go to the other extreme, and that is they, do hard, they hardly do anything. So there is wisdom in keeping in the middle of the road, as we say, being balanced. So if we take on, as the Prophet ﷺ advised, things we can do, then we have a greater chance of being regular and constant, because that's what Allah wants. Why? Well, the one reason we know is that constancy in doing something indicates a level of sincerity or commitment from the individual and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to demonstrate that but there is another another important reason why constancy in whatever we do even if it's a little bit or small it's important and the thing is this reason I want to share with you also indicates the infinite grace and, and benevolence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, often, brothers and sisters, we talk about justice. And we talk about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and does not do any injustice. But more than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is benevolent or compassionate. And full of grace for his creatures. You see, justice is simply to deal on a sort of one on one basis. But Allah is more than simply a just. He is, as he puts it in the Quran, full of grace and bounty for people. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not simply reward a good deed with something good one for one. <laughs> one for one would have been just. But he increases it. Allah says, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Subhanallah. Whoever comes or brings anything good, then he or she will have ten times that amount in terms of reward. Remember, one for one is just. But Allah is, give, is going to give us ten times more. This is the, the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the grace and the benevolence. You know, it's like somebody asks you for a loony and you give them five dollars instead. In addition to that, Allah tells us in the same verse that when it comes to sins or wrongdoing, it's one for one. He does not increase it. Subhanallah. وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا And whoever comes or brings anything that is sinful or evil, he will not be rewarded 
except one for one, like it. And this is from the grace and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in being regular and constant in what we do, there is a tremendous grace that Allah will show us as a result. And this is what I would like to share with you today, insha'Allah. There was a hadith that Shaykh al-Albani graded as Sahih. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam tells us, ma min Muslim yusabu fi jasadih. There is no Muslim who suffers an injury to his body or her body. Illa amar Allahu ta'ala al-hafadha. Except that Allah orders the angels who are recording what we do. He orders them, Uktubu li abdi li kulli yawmin wa laylatin min al khayri ma kana ya'mal. Allah says, Record for my servant, that is the person who is injured, who suffers from some affliction, so that the person is no longer able to do the many things regularly and constantly. Because when we become ill, we may not be able to do. You know, the sunnah prayers, the nafil prayers, and so on that we usually do when we're healthy. Yet, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reward us one for one. You do it, you get the reward. You don't do it, no reward. If the person is regular, when he or she is healthy and doing something good, if a person is not able to do that because of some uh, uh, illness or injury, the grace of Allah is such that he orders the angels to still record that good for that person, subhanAllah. <coughs> Allah says to the angels, Uktubu li abdi, write for my servant. Likulli yawmin wa layla, for every day and night, ma min al khair, the good, ma kana ya'malu, that he used to do, or she used to do. This is why we should be regular. See, this is the wisdom in the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam encouraging us not to take on too much. But whatever we do, strive to be regular. Strive to be regular. The Prophet ﷺ even cautioned us not to belittle any good deed. Sometimes we look at things and they seem too small and insignificant. The Prophet says, no. No good deed is too small or insignificant. Especially when it's done on a regular basis. So Allah tells the angels to continue to write the good that a person does day and night. As long as the person is restricted by my restriction. Allah's restriction is the affliction that afflicts us, whether it's a, a, a sickness or, or, or ill health or an injury that prevents us from doing what we would normally do when we're healthy. And this is from the grace, the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us in the Quran, Inna Allah ladhu fadlin ala nas. Indeed, Allah is full of grace for people. Not just giving them the bare minimum. He does much more than that. Walakinna akthara nasi la However, most people are not grateful. SubhanAllah. Imagine, brothers and sisters, if Allah were to deal with us on that level of one for one only. And that would be just, mind you. We can't complain, it's just one for one. Allah has Allah deals with us on a basis of grace and benevolence. And yet, many people are ungrateful. What about if Allah were to deal with people on simply a just basis, that's it, one for one? In this hadith, brothers and sisters, also highlights the importance that we need to pay to the things that are not compulsory but were recommended or practiced by the Prophet ﷺ. In particular, the Sunnah and the Nafil prayers. I know often people look at the whole issue of Salah and say, well, you know, it's not far, so I can forego it. It's only Sunnah. Well, yes, it's only Sunnah. It, it's not wajib to do it. But as you can see from the Hadith, if a person does not develop the habit or lifestyle, the norm of the person is not to do these things. Then when he or she can't do it for a good reason, there is no reward. 
So it's in our best interest, subhanAllah, it's in our best interest to begin to be regular and constant, to do muwadhaba, as we say, of these things, although they are not compulsory. Because first of all, no good deed will go unnoticed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up doors of His mercy and His grace that you and I can't even imagine now. And thirdly, as the hadith mentions, when we are unable to do these things due to ill health, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will still give us the reward. We don't do it and we still get the reward. What more could we ask for? All we have to do in return is to take some of our time and develop this habit or this nature of also doing the things that are recommended but not compulsory. And this is why, by the way, brothers and sisters, some scholars hold the view that to do that which is fard kifaya is more meritorious than doing that which is fard al ayn. Why? Because they say that the fard al ayn is a duty, you have to do it, you have no choice. But fardul kifaya, you have a choice. You can skip it because others will do it. And if others do it, there is no sin on, it, on the rest of us. Only if no one does it, like Salat al Janazah, then the whole community shares the sin or the blame. But if some members of the community perform it, then the rest who don't, they're absolved from any sin. But to still choose to do something that even if you didn't do, there was no sin. For this reason, they say it is more meritorious. And we need to look at our sunnah and nafil prayers and other things from this perspective. That yes, we don't have to do it. But to choose to do so may, reward, may result in tremendous rewards because we're making a conscious choice, an effort to do something that is pleasing to Allah that we're not obligated to do in the first place. We're not obligated to do in the first place. And that's why you'll see, if you read the hadith, you will find that the Prophet والسلام, on many things that are nafil or voluntary, he has, he has highlighted the tremendous rewards for these things. Why? Because we don't have to do it in the first place. But choosing to do so, when we're not obligated to do so, because it is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the sort of attitude and mindset that Allah wants the Muslims to develop and to nurture. So we should not belittle our sunnah and nafil prayers. They are important in our lives. And we may very well face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and wish that we had spent a little bit more time to do our sunnah and nafil prayers. I know often you know, sometimes we might be busy. There is some work that you're doing and you need to get back and this is understandable. I mean, even the Prophet والسلام, all the sunnah prayers, he didn't pray them every single day of his life. Mostly he prayed them. But a few times here and there, when the situation demanded, he would forego them. But we need to be careful because often, and, and this is where, you know, shaitan comes in, right? This force that we have to reckon with. This is where his temptations or his whisperings come in. If we're not careful, then almost every day, every, at the time of every prayer, there's something important to do. And so we will never pray our sunnah prayers if we allow shaitan to tempt us. You've already done the fart, mashallah. You've done your duty. Now you have this other work to go do. Why don't you go do it? This is the kind of justification we will get from shaitan. But we need to resist that. And we need to remember the advice of the Prophet والسلام, and the infinite <laughs> grace and bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That for little things, Allah will give us, give us tremendous rewards. But we have to do the things. We have to do these little things. Allah has promised us in the Quran, for example, that if we spend in His way, He will multiply it by 700 times and that's the least. But remember, 
we have to do the deed in the first place. In, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah gives us a beautiful example. He says, spending in his way is like planting a, a single grain, a single seed, which germinates and grows seven stalks. On each stalk or branch, you have 700 gra uh, 100 grains. So in the end, when you do the reaping, from the one grain or one seed you planted, you're getting 700 in return. And that's the minimum, because Allah says in the same verse, Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha, and Allah will increase it for whomever He wills beyond the 700. But remember, we have to plant the seed first. Without planting the seed, you're not going to get the 700 grains. So, from our side of things, we need to do what we have to do. And Allah has promised us His grace and His bounty. So we have to hold up our end of the bargain, and if we do, then Allah has guaranteed us, because the promise of Allah is the truth. And Allah does not, as we might say, break His promise or be disloyal to His promise. So if the condition is fulfilled of the human being doing what he or she is required to do, then the reward from Allah is absolutely guaranteed, no doubts about that. And so we need to pay some attention to this issue and not allow shaitan to tempt us into you know developing a lifestyle or a habit of simply always limiting ourselves to just the fart and then we rushing out and we forego our sunnah and our nafil prayers these things are important to bring us even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah the exalted bless all of us and may he open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed. And may he inspire us to live by this message. May Allah guide us and inspire us to seek to get closer to him as he says in one hadith Qudsi, by doing the things that are nawafu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for the good we do and multiply the reward. And may he forgive for us the mistakes that we make and the sins that we commit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the straight path. And may he protect us from the whisperings and the temptations of shaitan and the confusion of shaitan. And may he admit us all to paradise. May he guide us to do the things that are pleasing to him so that we can come closer to him. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.